All right, well, I'm going to start another mad scientist project here on this little ice machine. This was given to me. I worked on it, and the initial problem that the customer told me it had was that it had a Freon leak, but I couldn't find a Freon leak. What I found was the dryer was just totally restricted. Um, so once I fixed that, and um, this unit takes R402B, which what I found was R404A was really close, and I charged it up with that, but the thing just wouldn't make ice. The compressor's, the compressor's pretty much shot on the thing, I think, from the uh, from the overcharge and everything it had had over the years. Um, so I've got nothing to lose by trying some out of the box, unorthodox things with it. What I've got here is a, is a compressor out of a normal everyday household refrigerator so it's made to use 134A and I think I'm gonna try running it on 134A and here's the spec sheet on the compressor so it's a one quarter horsepower and I think that's a one third so I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make this work or not but I'm gonna take it all apart I'm gonna flush them back because I think they tried stop leaking it too I'm getting this weird kinda of gunk in it so I'm gonna flush it isolate the components and flush it real good when I've got this thing out and kinda of go from there Bug. so I'll take these screws out We'll see. Okay, so here we are. We got the compressor out, and this is the suction line to the evaporator. This is uh, going to the capillary tube. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to back flush it with a little bit of a flush, back flush it, and see if I can get um, anything out of it. That's why I soldered on this process tube so I can hook this uh, flush kit directly to that. Like this. Just gonna start with a tiny bit there, see what happens. Regulator down. Okay. All right. So that's on. Now I'm gonna open this valve and we're gonna hit it. somehow getting into the condenser. Oh yeah, it's tied into this.
go get some rags. I'll be right back. Alright, let's see what happens here. So I sent a little more flush through here and look what's coming out of here. Some nasty stuff. Alright, let me show y'all where we're at with this thing. So I didn't get it on film. But it was a huge mess. I got so much old nasty black oil. I flushed this condenser. I cut it here. And of course cut it here so that isolated the condenser. And I flushed that. Got a, It just made a huge mess. It was all over everything. All over me. It was, it was crazy. But tons of black oil out of there. Um, the cap tube seems clean now. And everything looks good. Okay, so we flushed the condenser, we flushed the evap. The only thing I didn't isolate and flush is this hot gas valve. But I back flushed it. Hopefully that's good. So my next step is I'm going to... Oh yeah, and I also used a die grinder and cut off these old compressor studs because it didn't match up with that footprint there. So I'm going to I'm gonna cut this off here and uh, start piping it in discharge suction process start piping this thing in and see if we can't get a vacuum started on it pretty soon alright well I'll pick it up after I do some piping and show you guys that part alright well here's day two of the project it's the morning and I had it got it all piped in last night it started raining so I had to kinda hurry up and get it piped in and nitrogen charge on it overnight it held 200 pounds overnight so I think she's pretty good and leak free this is a discharge line so I got put me an access valve here to get the true discharge pressure this will be the suction side of the process tube the filter dryer came with a with an access port and another one back here that I put that there just in case I have to put a different fan cycling control on it because obviously this one is not going to work very good much higher pressure than 134A so just put that tap there in case I could get a screw on fan cycling control but she's coming along pretty good. We'll just have to see what she runs like and if it'll actually make ice with this compressor. So, I'm going to get the vacuum started on it. Well, I'm getting my vacuum all set up here. And, uh, funny story about this is <clears throat> I wanted to order a second 
uh, micron gauge and so I figured that the uh, mini blue vac would be a good good little gauge for for a hundred bucks so I ordered that on True Tech Tools and I also um, they have these little rubber boots now for the other blue vacs so I ordered one of these in the gauge so I get it get the mail and open it up and what's in there is the original blue vac the classic blue vac which is like 250 bucks in the package and I think you know honestly my first instinct is wow awesome they sent me I ordered the micro blue vac they sent me the original blue vac this this is my old gauge um, but so I went ahead and called them I did the right thing because I thought in my head you know if I had ordered the two hundred fifty dollar blue back and they sent me this one you darn right I'd be calling them telling them hey you sent me the wrong one but since they sent me a more expensive one then I'm thinking hey it's okay just to keep my mouth shut on that so you know I went ahead and called them and um, they told me well we'd have to get you to pay the full price difference for the classic blue bag. I said, uh, no thank you. You know, I didn't really want I didn't really want to spend that much money. Um, so they went ahead and shipped me out the right one and I have to send them the other one back in the mail, but you know, just one of those moral moral kind of dilemmas. And I also picked me up this new hose. I got the three foot one. I hope I didn't make a mistake and get the three foot one and end up being too short to really use it, but um, it's probably a little overkill on this system, but I kind of just wanted to test out my new my new vacuum rig anyway, so um, yeah, oh, one other thing. I actually made my own little vacuum coupler before I got the new ones in um. So I just thought I'd throw this out there if any of you guys need one of these. What I did was I took two two old hoses and I took a, a, a grinder and cut off the brass ends. So that's what the... And then I used a piece of 3 8 copper, although now looking at it I think a piece of 5 16 would have been a better fit and wouldn't have to be like pinched down and kind of ugly like that. Um, but it works and it's this is plumbing solder. It's the only thing I could get that would really stick good to uh, the brass. So, little tech tip. And you guys need a vacuum coupler. Get a couple old hoses, cut the ends off, solder them together. Bada bing, bada boom. So I keep this one as my spare because then I ordered a couple of new ones. So, um, yeah. Let's get this set up. So I where's my dialog? Oh, there it is. Closet. Okay. I only have <clears throat> only have one of those hoses for now.
check tip for you guys about vacuums is if you're getting some funny readings um, I was having some issues that these Appian a little bit funky for the crater Schrader core depressors not pushing in the Schrader core very well will give you some real funky readings on your gauges so always check that make sure that the uh, the depressor is, is sticking out real good um, on these Appian core removal tools Okay, so we're down to a good micron reading here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with 12 ounces of 134A and uh, go from there. Again, this is uh, anyone's guess on how this thing refrigerates. Um, but you got to start somewhere. I'm going to start with 12 ounces and see where we go from there. I'm going to go ahead and close off my valves. And purge my line. Flip the tank upside down. Got to kind of be careful with these because I want to get accurate reading. I'm going to put it in the liquid side here. My daughter singing Frozen in the background. This hose probably holds about a half an ounce. Throw my cores back in.
Alright, next step is to wire this thing up. And... I guess see how she runs. Okay guys, so I gutted the original controls and I just threw one of these little 3 and ones on the compressor just to get it running so we can run it and test it. So we're really close. Let me uh, let me throw my gauges on it, get a cord, and we'll see what she does. I put some water in the bin and let's see what happens. <laughs> 